Envy is a feeling that we all inevitably have on occasion. However, when said envy reaches a toxic level to the point where we misevaluate the status in whatever hierarchy that we're a part of, that's when jealousy can ruin something great. Draymond Green has been one of the driving factors that has essentially destroyed the Warriors dynasty. Failing to see his own worth, what Green has gotten away with over the last year and even throughout the entirety of his career has been staggering. Green's assaulting of Jordan Poole back in the preseason was swept under the rug by the organization. Karma may be a bitch, but it's always fair. And while the having lived up to expectations this season Boston Celtics fired Ime Udoka for breaking their team's culture, there was no punishment from Steve Kerr or Bob Myers given to Draymond for his ruthless act. Stephen Curry's masterclass where he dropped 39 points hitting clutch shot one after the other down the stretch with Clay and Poole also hitting massive daggers was followed up by Coach Kerr saying post-game quote, Draymond willed us to a victory. He was mad at the world yelling at our bench, their bench, everybody. Frankly, we all deserved it, end quote. We'll put the cowardice from the 11-time champion all-time three-point percentage leader in Steve Kerr aside to begin this video Let's again go back to the moment everyone wants to sweep under the rug. Let's be fair to Draymond for a moment, as he did offer a prolonged 30 plus minute apology for punching Jordan Poole, where I would state at the time, I thought seemed genuine. But as simple as it may sound, in retrospect, sorry means it won't happen again. And believe me, it's happened over and over again, which has proved that the initially seeming to be genuineness from that interview has been anything but the case throughout the course of this roller coaster 22 23 dub season. Draymond has already picked up a suspension from the NBA for racking up 16 technical fouls, a number that he's lucky isn't at 20. He's continued to call LeBron James a better player than the very teammate in Stephen Curry who's carried him to four rings. He's continuously hurt the team chemistry with volatile intensity and just pulled off one of his patented kicks, this time on Herb Jones. The dirtiness and toxicity has carried over to his teammates, coaching staff, and even to the rest of the league, slowly but surely having taken this Dubs team from the hero to the villain. And teams break bad all the time, that's not the problem here. It's the media trying to make him still look like the good guy, however, and just letting go of the fact that he publicly embarrassed Jordan Poole and his family. And I'm not saying this shouldn't be a world of forgiveness, but I am saying you need to change if we're going to forgive you. Draymond's anger issue clearly hasn't changed and can't help but either be forgiven ingenuinely or swept under the rug. Even the Warriors announcers and Bob Fitzgerald and Coletta Azabuki couldn't acknowledge what Draymond did when they interviewed Bob Myers during a game earlier this year. They had Myers on like right after the punch, we all assumed to talk about the punch, but conveniently never got to the question about it. Additionally, having media members like the man who interviewed him courtside after last night's game on his side in Chris Haynes of Clutch Sports also played a part in this sweeping under the rug of the quote-unquote punch. The only man who seemed to address it, or had the right to address it, was Green himself, who did a documentary that was rightfully ripped apart by Charlie, aka the YouTube channel with 12 million subscribers known as Critical. Go watch the Draymond Punch documentary along with Charlie's reaction if you disagree with me. To quickly summarize it, the documentary from Green a few weeks after the punch had even taken place accurately portrayed Green as a classless coward who's got the correct ties in the media to cover up what he's done which continues to this day. By the way, a shame to all of TNT for signing off on that documentary, but this speaks to how Green hasn't taken the Warriors team chemistry seriously in quite some time. His podcast speaks to his more motivated willingness to divide the likes of the 14 players around him with vigorous hot takes rather than improve said chemistry. Draymond's antics at last year's championship parade really showed his true colors. He 
displayed little to no gratitude for anyone surrounding the game. This live TV, right? Yes, sir. Fuck em. Making statements that as a virtual media member, having covered the team before their title, I took personally with a grain of salt. Still, that didn't stop me from supporting Green to the best of my abilities, even after the tape of the punch was released, something that I now greatly regret. It wasn't just admittedly yours truly continuing to support Green after the punch. From a personal perspective though, with how he and the Dubs organization responded to his assault of Jordan Poole, however, I can no longer try to cover things up like this or try to paint this team as the good guy anymore, especially after what just happened. Since his conversation with Bob Myers on the plane last summer, which apparently lasted hours that Green admitted to having, Draymond's flagrant nature has reached another level. By the way, this all speaks to the fact of how impressive it is that the flawless Wardell Stephen Curry II and even his splash brother Clay Thompson have put up with this man Draymond's belligerent ways over the course of the last decade plus, still managing to be the driving factors to four championships in under a decade. Draymond Green will forever claim that he had a bigger role in that than he really did. If you let the media do the talking for themselves, those claims would be widely regarded as valid ones. Instead, he has to go on his podcast and talk all the shit in the world. His answer in his interview with Chris Haynes last night, taking credit for Golden State's two top shooters taking over, exemplifies his delusion. Later, Green would contradict himself in the post-game press conference by saying, if there's one guy I know is always going to ride for me, it's Steph. Same thing goes for Clay." end quote. In that statement, he could have easily included two players that have attempted to keep his anger issue in line in the past in Jordan Poole and Andre Iguodala, but from Green's perspective, it's like, why do that when I can single out one or two guys and leave the rest out? Notice how he started that last statement by saying, if there's one guy and then including Clay. My bigger point to his post-game response is, is that instead of thanking the fans, who've helped this team go 20 plus games over 500 at home, whereas they're 20 plus games under 500 on the road. He gave an answer courtside, which is on your screen, that of course, as always in Green's opinion, make him resemble the top dog. But the real problem I made this video for is the danger he's causing to other players. Draymond has physically manipulated other players with his subconscious aggression setting an example to both young players in the game today and on the come up that will have its effect for decades to come. We can't have another malice at the palace. But from kicking Steven Adams in the nuts twice in acts he claims were unintentional and now evidently attempting to kick Herb Jones in the face in Tuesday night's game, it's like Green doesn't realize that. It's shocking that Draymond is still even a part of the NBA, let alone didn't receive a technical foul for his kick last night. Failing to recognize the business aspect of the game, while Draymond has established a reputation as being one of the greatest defensive players to ever grace the court, and the fact that he's a fundamental passing presence to the Warriors system, being the lead assist guy for the last couple seasons, the shots Green took at last year's parade while slugging down a 40 now have an evident meaning behind them. They were shots at D Flo and the media forever doubting his greatness and trying to give Stephen Curry, Jordan Poole, or anyone else any type of credit for what he himself thinks he's personally achieved. Draymond's more volatile than ever before chemistry disruption was exemplified on Tuesday night after the Warriors coaching staff decided to not review a charge call. No matter the circumstances, that type of aggression is essentially unheard of by about any other player across the NBA. Bob Myers had to come down and calm Green down after that, but it's ironic that Green is even expecting the whistle to go in his or his team's favor at this point. First of all, as defending champs, you can't expect anything to be given to you, especially with how Green has gotten people preying on the dub's downfall with his actions. All throughout this season, we've seen Steph Curry get the short end of the stick when it comes to the whistle and the review system. The Warriors as a team rank dead last in free throw attempts. Green himself, meanwhile, is given a different type of leeway when it comes to what the officials call a tech on 
and what they don't. Other players like Trey Young and even Jordan Poole toss the refs the ball and are whistled for tees, while Draymond can practically get away with whatever he wants. That says a lot considering he has 16 technical fouls in the first place. All in all, there are two words behind the confusion from this team's biggest diehard fans about viewing them as a contender one minute and as a bottom-feeding frustration the next. Those two words are Draymond Green. If his type of intensity translated to the road where the refs are naturally against you and fans can't be vibed off, then the Warriors would easily have a top 3-4 seed in the West. Leading us back to my original point about an envious nature stemming from Draymond. His jealousy was the entire reason for the punch when you really think about it. My guy Jordan Poole was hyped up the entire summer on this channel after receiving his first massive contract. Clay and of course Draymond were waiting for an extension themselves and didn't get one. It's really easy to label something like that as petty jealousy, but I think we all have some type of sympathy to the rough upbringing of Draymond and the fact that he's come from literally nothing, which, don't get me wrong, I can't relate to. Udonis Haslam, however, had a good point about that in relation to Ja Morant recently. Haslam would say, quote, You can be hood, but you can't be street. Go listen to that clip from UD for more details. But Draymond's actions, especially as of late, have definitely crossed the line from hood to street, and it's become increasingly obvious to your typical unbiased observer. This is and hasn't been acceptable behavior for quite some time now, and now it's fully coming to light who the type of person that Green really is. It's time for Draymond to have some serious self-reflection, or he and his teammates will be on the couch before they know it, but at the end of the day, this is just basketball. Fans want to see the best for their players and have no choice but to follow them and their actions based off the passion they feel for the game. Draymond's failed to set the example that a non-champion needs to be setting, let alone a four-time champion. What are your thoughts on Draymond right now? The two shoutouts from my last upload and this one are on your screen. Let me know your answer in the comments to compete in Community Speaks and to get your take out there. This was D-Flow and peace.